Srimad Bhagavatam, translated with commentaries by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Kinto 1, Chapter 9 The Passing Away of Bhishma Dev in the Presence of Lord Krishna. Text 24 May my Lord, who is four handed and whose beautifully decorated lotus face, with eyes as red as the rising sun, is smiling, kindly await me that moment when I quit this material body. Purport Bhismadev knew well that Lord Krishna is the original Narayan. His worshipable deity was four-handed Narayan. But he knew that four-handed Narayan is a plenary expansion of Lord Krishna. Indirectly, he desired Lord Sri Krishna to manifest himself in his four-handed feature of Narayan. A Vaishnava is always humble in his behavior, although it was cent percent certain that Bhismadev was approaching Vaikuntadam just after leaving his material body. Still, as a humble Vaishnav, he desired to see the beautiful face of the Lord, for after quitting the present body, he might not be in a position to see the Lord anymore. A Vaishnav is not puffed up. Although the Lord guarantees his pure devotee entrance into his abode. Here, Bhishmadev says, quote, as long as I do not quit this body, end quote. This means that the great general would quit the body by his own will. He was not being forced by the laws of nature. He was so powerful that he could stay in his body as long as he desired. He got this benediction from his father. He desired that the Lord stay before him in his four-handed Narayan feature so that he might concentrate upon him and thus be in trance in that meditation. Then his mind might be sanctified with thinking of the Lord. Thus he did not mind wherever he might go. A pure devotee is never very anxious to go back to the kingdom of God. He entirely depends on the good will of the Lord. He is equally satisfied even if the Lord desires him to go to hell. The only desire that a pure devotee entertains is that he may always be in rapt attention with thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord regardless. Bismadev wanted this much only that his mind be absorbed in thinking of the Lord and that he pass away thus. That is the highest ambition of a pure devotee. Text 25 Sutta Goswami said, Maharaj Yudhisthira, after hearing Bhismadev speak in that appealing tone, asked him, in the presence of all the great rishis, about the essential principles of various religious duties. Purport Bhismadev, speaking in that appealing tone, convinced Maharaj Yudhisthira that he was very soon passing away. And Maharaj Yudhisthira was inspired by Lord Sri Krishna to ask him of the principles of religion. Lord Sri Krishna inspired Maharaj Yudhisthira to ask Bhismadev, in the presence of many great sages, indicating thereby that the Lord's devotee, like Bhismadev, although apparently living as a worldly man, is far superior to many great sages, even Vyasadev. Another point is that Bhismadev at that time was not only lying on a deathbed of arrows, but he was greatly aggrieved because of that state. One should not have asked him any question at that time. 
But Lord Sri Krishna wanted to prove that his pure devotees are always sound in body and mind by dint of spiritual enlightenment. And thus, in any circumstances, a devotee of the Lord is in perfect order to speak of the right way of life. Yudhisthira also preferred to solve his problematic questions from Bhismadev rather than ask anyone else present there who was seemingly more learned than Bhismadev. This is all due to the arrangement of the great wheel carrier, Lord Sri Krishna, who establishes the glories of his devotee. The father likes to see the son become more famous than himself. The Lord declares very emphatically that worship of his pure devotee is more valuable than the worship of the Lord himself. Text 26 At Maharaj Yudhisthira's inquiry, Bhismadev first of all defined all the classifications of castes and orders of life in terms of the individual's qualifications. Then he systematically, in twofold divisions, described counteraction by detachment and interaction by attachment. Purport The conception of four castes and four orders of life, as planned by the Lord Himself, Bhagavad Gita 413, is to accelerate transcendental qualities of the individual person so that he may gradually realize his spiritual identification and thus act accordingly to get free from material bondage or conditional life. In almost all the Puranas, the subject matter is described in the same spirit, and so also in the Mahabharata. It is more elaborately described by Bhismadev in the Shantaparva, beginning from the 60th chapter. The Vanashram Dharm is prescribed for the civilized human being just to train him to successfully terminate human life. Self-realization is distinguished from the life of the lower animals engaged in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. Bhishmadev advised for all human beings nine qualifications. 1. Not to become angry. 2. Not to lie. 3. To equally distribute wealth. 4. To forgive. 5. To beget children only in one's legitimate wife. 6. To be pure in mind and hygienic in body. 7. Not to be inimical toward anyone. 8. To be simple. And 9. To support servants or subordinates. One cannot be called a civilized person without acquiring the above mentioned preliminary qualities. Besides these, the Brahmins or the intelligent men, the administrative men, the mercantile community, and the laborer class must acquire special qualities in terms of occupational duties mentioned in all the Vedic scriptures. For the intelligent men, controlling the senses is the most essential qualification, which is the basis of morality. Sex indulgence even with a legitimate wife, must also be controlled, and thereby family control will automatically follow. An intelligent man abuses his great qualifications if he does not follow the Vedic way of life. This means he must seriously make a study of the Vedic literatures, especially of the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. For learning Vedic knowledge, one must approach a person who is cent percent engaged in devotional service. He must not do things which are forbidden in the Shastras. 
A person cannot be a teacher if he drinks or smokes. In the modern system of education, the teacher's academic qualification is taken into consideration without evaluation of his moral life. Therefore, the result of education is misuse of high intelligence in so many ways. The Chatriyas, or the administrative class, is especially advised to give in charity and not to accept charity in any circumstances. Modern administrators raise subscriptions for some political functions, but never give in charity to the citizens in any state function. It is just the reverse in the adjunctions of the Shastras. The administrative class must be well-versed in the Shastras, but must not take to the profession of teachers. The administrators should never pretend to become nonviolent and thereby go to hell. When Arjuna wanted to become a nonviolent coward on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he was severely chastised by Lord Krishna. The Lord degraded Arjuna at that time to the status of an uncivilized man for his avowed acceptance of the cult of nonviolence. The administrative class must be personally trained in military education. Cowards should not be elevated to the presidential throne by dint of numerical votes only. The monarchs were all chivalrous personalities, and therefore monarchy should be maintained, provided the monarchy is regularly trained in the occupational duties of a king. In fighting, the king or the president should never return home without being hurt by the enemy. The so-called king of today never visits the war field. He is very much expert in artificially encouraging the fighting strength in the hope of false national prestige. As soon as the administrative class is turned into a gang of mercantile and labor men, the whole machinery of government becomes polluted. The Vaishas, or the mercantile communities, are especially advised to protect the cows. Cow protection means increasing the milk productions, namely curd and butter. Agriculture and distribution of the foodstuff are the primary duties of the mercantile community, backed by education and Vedic knowledge and trained to give in charity. As the Chatriyas were given charge of the protection of the citizens, Vaishyas were given charge of the protection of animals. Animals are never meant to be killed. Killing of animals is a symptom of barbarian society. For a human being, agricultural produce, fruits and milk, are sufficient and compatible foodstuffs. The human society should give more attention to animal protection. The productive energy of the laborer is misused when he is occupied by industrial enterprises. Industry of various types cannot produce the essential needs of man, namely rice, wheat, grains, milk, fruits and vegetables. The production of machines and machine tools increases the artificial living fashion of a class of vested interest and keeps thousands of men in starvation and unrest. This should not be the standard of civilization. The Sudra class is less intelligent, and they have no independence. They are meant for rendering sincere service to the three higher sections of the society. The Sudra class can attain all comforts of life simply by rendering service to the higher classes. It is especially enjoined that a sudra should never bank money. As soon as the sudras accumulate wealth, it will be misused for sinful activities, wine, women, and gambling. Wine, women, and gambling indicate that the population is degraded into less than sudra quality. The higher caste should always look after the maintenance of the sudras, and they should provide them with old and used garments. 
A sudra should not leave his master when the master is old and invalid, and the master should keep the servants satisfied in all respects. The sudras must first of all be satisfied by sumptuous food and clothing before any sacrifice is performed. In this age, so many functions are held by spending millions, but the poor laborer is not sumptuously fed or given charity, clothing, etc. The laborers are thus dissatisfied, and so they make agitation. The varners are, so to speak, classifications of different occupations, and ashram dharm is gradual progress on the path of self-realization. Both are interrelated, and one is dependent on the other. The main purpose of ashram dharm is to awaken knowledge and detachment. The brahmachari ashram is the training ground for the prospective candidates. In this ashram, it is instructed that this material world is not actually the home of the living beings. The conditioned souls under material bondage are prisoners of matter, and therefore self-realization is the ultimate goal of life. The whole system of ashram dharm is a means to detachment. One who fails to assimilate the spirit of detachment is allowed to enter into family life with the same spirit of detachment. Therefore, one who attains detachment may at once adopt the fourth order, namely renounced, and thus live on charity only, not to accumulate wealth, but just to keep body and soul together for ultimate realization. Household life is for one who is attached, and the Vanaprast and Sannyasa orders of life are for those who are detached from material life. The Brahmachari ashram is especially meant for training both the attached and detached.